ESPN Player, your home for more than 5,000 live college games. NCAA football, including the college bowls and playoff. NCAA basketball, including March Madness. All the great action you'd expect from ESPN. Plus your favorite ESPN studio shows with SEC Network, ESPNU, and Longhorn Network TV channels available 24-7. Hours and hours of live sport available at your fingertips. Watch the games you love anytime, anywhere on ESPNPlayer.com. Texas A&M is prepared to make a big run at Florida State's Jimbo Fisher. Ten years, $75 million. That was the appeal. He gets an opportunity now to start over on his terms. When A&M called, what was the overriding reason that you said? So well, I think the first interest was that the athletic director, Scott Woodward, I had a really good relationship with. So you listen, and I think the culture of A&M, as I dug into it, was amazing. The academics is the top 20 institution in the country. Athletically, you have everything in the world. You have great recruiting base. There's no reason why you shouldn't be have players and, and be able to coach them well. You know, it, it's an obvious question, Jimbo. When you sign a 10-year, $75 million contract, there's an incredible amount of pressure that I would think comes with that. But do you look at it as pressure? I don't. I'm doing my job. And I'm, I'm going to do, whether it was a one-year or a 10-year, I'm going to coach the same. I don't know any other way. I know what my expectations are. And, I, and now, can we do it quickly? Maybe. Now, at LSU, it happened in four years. Florida State, it happened in four You don't know when it's going to happen. But you just got to make sure you're doing the right things. And if you, put, again, just like you tell the players, if the process is right, results will come. A gap right to A gap. Stay in the A gap. I don't care where he goes. If the A gap's open, you run to the A gap. Jimbo, have you, you seen the guys here. buy into your style? Because you're going to coach them hard. Yeah, They're around you. I've seen you on the practice field. How is that transition going? It seems to be good. I guess you'd have to ask them. But our practices, in my opinion, become more physical. They become more effective. And they start having fun competing and playing in a certain way. That's fun too. And they start having fun, our practice will become fun. You know he's understanding it now. He's, he's calling, we're calling the coaches out. <laughs> What's been the hardest transition so far? Is it going from the offense they did to your more pro style approach? Or has it been something else off the field? First and foremost challenge is getting the kids to, to trust and believe in, in your vision and the things and getting them to see as one because I think that's the first part of it. And even saying, okay, I wanna win a championship. Okay, people say it. Do you, really, do you really see it and do you really believe it? And all the things that it encompasses. And I think educating them in that way of where we're going and what we're trying to do. And whether it's a championship now, but you've got to lay that foundation. And that thing can never go away. Alabama is back as the champion of college football for Coach Nick Saban, a career six national championship. How about that? You know, Jimbo, most people run away from Nick Saban. You're right back here in the same mm -hmm. division with him again, your old buddy. What's it going to take for you guys to get to that point when you're competing? Go to program. I mean, you got you to and bring the players in and entrench the culture of Texas A&M and what we believe is a championship culture. And our kids have to believe it, and then you have to line up and you have to play a 60-minute football game. I mean, that's what he did in Alabama. He got the right players in there. He built his culture of how he wanted things done, the way things are done, and got the kids to believe wholeheartedly in what's going on. And they believe it, and it's, and it's feeding itself. And they've also advanced, and you know, Nick has not become complacent. I mean, he stayed very hungry, and I think that's what it's going to be here. When you take on a new challenge like this, does it re-energize you, even though someone like you who's been in coaching as long as you have? I think it does. I think it truly makes you, as you get to other places, reevaluate everything. Because you have things in place at a program and the infrastructure of things that, you know, you say, I want to change that, and you get to them at the end. And sometimes change, making that change is harder just because you've been somewhere and other things have been established. When you go and you have to build it up again and start it from scratch again, it's like building a new house, I think it does bring that out, and there's some changes you, you do making little things that make a difference.